uh, before the break, I was saying like this, you're celebrating, you're coming up and celebrating your first year of hosting The Daily Show. Yeah. But I understand, because you, 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 I ran into it at a party, and you said to me that on the weekends, you sometimes fly back to South Africa I to try. see your family. Yeah, I try. It's an 18-hour flight no, 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 to no, Johannesburg. No, 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 16 hours. Oh, 16 hours. Yeah. My apologies. No, 18 six, would be ridiculous. The ridiculous six, How do you do that? Because you got to show, what do you leave, like Friday morning, Friday uh, night? Yeah, I'll fly Thursday late night, close to midnight. Okay. And then land on, uh, I'll land on the Friday, and then I'll have a Friday full day, and then Saturday I fly back, and I'm here on a so Sunday. So like 36 hours in, in Johannesburg, and not, then you come not back? Not even, I guess it's barely 24. How do you, how are you alive? How do you do that? <laughs> How often have you done that over the past year? Uh, six, seven times, maybe. It's so, I love sleeping on a plane. I feel like airplanes are like the last just place of sleepingness. <laughs> it's just beautiful. I just sleep and but I, I... How do you possibly sleep through the night? Don't the stewardesses come up and say, like, no. would you like a pillow? Would no, no, like no. A... I, 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 so I wrap my... I have this mask that provides humidity, and then I wear, like, a hoodie, and then I tape my nose closed. And then this is all true. This is all true. And then I, I, I wrap myself up so I have humidity and I close everything up and then I'm gone. And do you look like you Bane when I do. you're done with it? I look, like, I look like Bane and Darth Vader had a child. That's what I look like. I'd see that movie. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've got a book coming out uh, right after the election. Yes. It's called Born a Crime. Born a Crime. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I guess the title came from my life. I was born a crime. You know, I, I was born to a, a black South African mother and a, a white Swiss father uh, during apartheid in South Africa, and them doing the thing was illegal. I'm sorry, the thing? Yeah. This thing? The thing. Oh, okay. The thing, the thing of making me. The thing. <laughs> this thing? This thing? Well, that thing does that? This... Well, that's worse than me saying the thing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's even, just being, just that's being even sure. worse. That is? That's, really? That's, that's, that doesn't that's even look like the thing. It kind of does. That's, it, that's, that's going that's, into that's nothing. That's one and that's the other thing right that's, there. So anyway. That's so. how it works. You know how the thing works, right? <laughs> I hope so. OK. Um, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, my parents got together during that time, which was, uh, was, was against the law. And so I was born a crime. And, and what year was this? Uh, this was 1984. Mm -hmm. you know, so and when did that law change? Apartheid only ended in 1990. Wow. So, you know, for the first six years of my life, I was just living this, this life of being a physical crime. They couldn't... Like, I wasn't allowed outdoors, and writing the book was fantastic because I had to go back through my life. I learned things about my life I didn't actually even know. For instance, I always thought I was an indoor child. Turns out I wasn't allowed to leave the house <laughs> because if I was seen in Soweto, which was the, the, the area I lived in, the police would see me and go like, oh, that kid, he's a crime. You can see that. And then they'd take me away and send me off to an orphanage because my mom wasn't allowed to have me and my dad wouldn't be allowed to have, had, uh, to have made me. What do you make of Americans complaining about our rights being taken away or our country being taken from us when you grew up someplace where your existence itself was a violation of the law? You know, I, I, I always say to people, I, I can never judge somebody for thinking that their world is tough because it is tough to you, you know? I look at my upbringing and I go, it was not... I remember when I went to Brazil and I visited the favelas in, in Rio de Janeiro and I was like, man, this is bad. And then I go with Americans to South Africa and they're like, no, this is bad. And then everyone's just like, no, this is bad. No, this is bad. It's, it's bad for you and that's, that's all it really needs to be. So I... When people go, my rights are being taken away, I go, do you feel like they're being taken away? It's like, yeah. And it's like, well, that's, that's all you can do then. And it's like, why do you say that? Because I can't order more food. And I'm like, oh, that's... <laughs> it's different. It's different. It's different, but it's still valid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's still valid. We all uh, have our challenges. You also have, a, you also have a show at the Beacon Theater here in New York to the New York Comedy Festival. Yeah. What night is that? I'm uh, going to be doing stand-up comedy. That's on the 5th of November. That's going to be fun. Why do you have a full-time job, my friend? Yes. You have a full-time job. Yes. And you're a great stand-up. But you ever think to yourself, on the weekends, I'm just going to take it easy. And that's why I do stand-up. That's me taking a break. I go like, oh, I'm so tired. I've got to go do some stand-up. Wow. <laughs> Well, uh, that's, thank you for doing it. Yeah, that. that's my thank love. You. Genuinely, that's my well, love. Thanks for being here. Thank you so enjoy much. Enjoy the election. Thank you. Enjoy. enjoy you life. enjoy it. Yeah, you enjoy it together. <laughs> the New York Comedy Festival presents Trevor Noah as at the Beacon Theater on November 5th. Trevor Noah, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>